Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. Well, you'd be privileged if you were in my shoes to be face to face with a woman who has been first in all her endeavors in life. In everything she's done, she's been first. Mrs. Adetun Ogusheye is the first female professor in Nigeria and one who has recorded many firsts in her long years of service in the academia. Though Adetun was born in 1926 in Benin City on the 5th of December, she is from Ijebu Ode in Ogun State. Like many other female giants, she had her secondary school education at the prestigious Queen's College, Yaba, in 1939. She thereafter proceeded to Yaba High College of Technology, where she received her diploma in 1948, becoming the first woman to graduate from the school. Subsequently, having received the Best Graduating Student Award in 1952, she left the shores of Nigeria on scholarship to Cambridge University in the United Kingdom, where she obtained her first degree in geography. Four years later, she earned her master's degree in SAME and took another master's degree in library science from Simmons College in the United States in 1962. However, before moving to the United States of America, Professor Gunshaye taught at the Anglican Girls' Grammar School in Elisha, now named St. Margaret School and St. Anne's School in Ibadan. She also worked in various capacities at the Library of the University of Ibadan. And in 1973, she became a professor of Library and Information Science at the University. Between 1977 and 1979, she was appointed the Dean of Education at the University of Ibadan making her the first female to occupy such position. She retired from the university system in 1987, but took up several other international and national assignments which saw her serve in high positions. She currently manages the Ogunshaya Foundation, a non-governmental organization with focus on research in library foundation for students. She has written and published well over 50 academic publications and books. Of note is a break in silence, a book she wrote which chronicled in detail a sibling's tragic ending after sympathizing with Nigeria's Igbo victims of the late 1960s pogrom. A mother and grandmother, 93-year-old Ogunshaya still makes out time for women and youths in the various sociocultural and educational organizations she belongs to. You must, you, you must have been such a princess in your younger days, Professor Adito. Uh, well, I, I, I had I belong to the royal line in my in my hometown in Jebu and in Umu, my mother's hometown. Really? Yes. You, I mean, you have been first in everything you did, but you're not the first of your of your family. You know, the, the first child of your family, are you? Well, my mother lost his, her first ba baby as a baby. Okay. It was a boy. Mm. And lost the baby, then I came along. Oh, so you but have I'm, been the I'm first, really, I'm the really, first child. But I'm still the eldest in the family. You also had a younger brother, immediate younger brother, who was in the military in the days of the Civil War. He was not in the immediate one, he was number three. Victor the, Banjo. Victor Banjo, yes. Colonel Victor, late Colonel Victor Banjo. Yes. My, my, the, the second Biafra person Army, was ECN, the one who was that, who started ECN. He started Electricity Corporation. Ade, Ade, that, is, that is Ademola Banja was number two. Okay. And he was an engineer. He was the first Africans to head ECM. Wow. And then number three was Victor Banja. So the, is, your family is a family of first, isn't it? Is that what well, you're saying? Well, my, 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 we, we were very lucky. We had both educated parents. What kind of a child were you, you know? Uh, growing up really restless well, no i wasn't actually i thought i was a i was a thinking child I was more when they are the eldest you sort of have uh you have to lay down the standards okay. in the family and uh, but i was god and god has endowed me i know i, I don't have i was i won the scholarship in queen's college lagos i was lady clifford scholar in Queen's College, Lagos. I won a scholarship to Ibadan University, and I've got a British, I've got um, 
a Nigerian government scholarship to Cambridge, Cambridge University. And you were the first, from what I gather, African, female, first female African to be admitted into Cambridge? Yes, that's, that's what they say. How did yes. that make you feel when you were you know, admitted into Cambridge? I just thank the Cambridge. Lord. I mean, I just you, you thank must have had a whole lot of uh, oh, I white did. people I, around you. I, 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 <laughs> Uh, well, I, before I went to Cambridge, I went to Yabaha College, and I was the only student. Let me tell the you, first as I well. was the, yes, I was the only student in my first year at Yabaha College, and it was my my father who went to the institution. It was an all male institution then, and they were supposed to just admit uh, doctors, people train the doctors, the engineers, the the uh, administrators and the, the senior administrators and the t uh, educators for the civil service then. And my father came back, uh, came round to Queen's College to my principal and said, I want my daughter to go to, I can't afford to send her to England, but I want her to go to that institution that uh, existed in uh, the Yabaho College Institute. I want you to prepare her for the entrance examination. And my principal said, but w women did not, there weren't girls there. And my father said he had looked at the, what do they call it, the document establishing the institution, and that there is nothing in the institution that said I mean, uh, that a woman a could, woman not, could not be. He said, in fact, I've got a form for her to fill and for you to recommend her that she's able to take the entrance exam. So my principal was Dr. Whitaker then. So you became uh, an Dr. only Whittaker. female in the high college. You know, yes. Is there anything you didn't achieve or you would have wanted to achieve, you know, education? Yes, I would have wanted to do my PhD, but I didn't complete it. But instead of that, when I was head of library studies, I started a research program in seventy, in seventy-five, a, a research program to find out whether what effect can uh, lib uh, can the existence of a library do to the um, to the intellectual and social development of a of a child. And we found out that at the end of the six year, our children were not only two years ahead, our own children were more, um, had knowledge of the vari a variety of careers they could go to, which the other children did not have. We also had a, another control group, the children of professors. We didn't provide anything for them because they came along. But they were two years ahead when we gave them the, te the test, at the, the intellectual test at the beginning. But we found out that at the end of it, they narrowed that gap. Mm. Our children narrowed the gap between them and the professors. Let's, let's go back to your younger brother, Victor Banjo, who was in the military mm. during the Civil War. Mm. Do you think that... Victor, your brother, was right to be on the side of uh, the Afra during the war. Well, he, I wasn't surprised that he was on the side of Biafra, and he said his reason why he was on the side of Biafra. What reason was that? First of all, he and Ujuku were friends here. They both were graduates in the army. They both had, I, I wrote a book about it, I, and I launched a book about it. Uh, and uh, they, they both were, what shall I say, the, the active, uh, active group that wants independence for Nigeria, who, when the, the boy did the coup, he wasn't part of them. Instead, he was in Lagos then, he was head of the, um, I think, of the engineering corps. He said he, he risked his life, went around trying to stabilize the army in Lagos and, and uh, wrote the statement for um, 
in Ronsi that he would he should make uh, to to calm the situation. In fact, the boys who did the coup wanted him to take over because he was educated, he was a graduate, and, and he said, no, we must all follow Inonsi because he was, uh, he was the head of the army and was running, running and keep the hierarchy in the army so that there won't be a civil war. But somehow, somewhere down the line, we don't know what happened. Ironsi suddenly arrested him. As it, so it was Ironsi who detained him in the East. He wrote to Gawan to say that we should try and settle this. Then Ironsi got killed. Abi, wasn't he was that assassinated. He yes. was assassinated. He wasn't part of the group that assassinated. He had uh, a, a, a statement where he gave a reason where he supported uh, Biafra. That after they had massacred them in the north and in the east, they again invaded them to come to there. And so he, he felt that somebody ought to, pro and he was protesting about it. That was why he, he joined Ujuku. He was the only engineer in the army, and, uh, and he orga organized them so that they could repel the northerners. My point of resentment came only when Ujuku killed my brother, executed my brother. Because I said, ah, this man who saved you, who helped train you, organize and train your army, and who helped you re resist the onslaught of the North. For a 93-year-old, um, you have remembered so much already. And yeah, in the book, I spelled out what has happened. And uh, so, but let me ask: out. What do you consider your greatest worry about Nigeria now, today? God has a plan for Nigeria to be one country. We have a chance in the world if we stay one group. Uh, and I'm and I'm hoping that our leaders will try to promote unity. Okay, let me just take this quote from The Punch, which apparently relates to what your thoughts were. Despite the marginal increase, it is still low by UNESCO standards. UNESCO recommends 15 to 20 percent, that is, of a budgetary allocation to the education sector to enable nations adequately cater for rising demands. Of course, UNESCO had always established that standard that you needed to, and, and this was why uh, many of us uh, were happy that uh, Abu Lawa put education in the forefront of his uh, vision and development for Nigeria. In fact, if I was on, on his, um, on the, the Banjo Commission, it wasn't our own Banjo, that did a survey of primary, uh, primary and secondary education. And we, we, and we, we set up uh, uh, the standard by which you could, you would have full and compulsory, uh, is it? Primary uh, education. Yeah. Even up to part of sec up to secondary two in Nigeria, and that gave us a head start to the rest of the country, and it's now had widened the gap between the north and the south. And it was a pity that the others didn't follow suit. If they had followed suit uh, in the three of the three regions, both the, the south east wanted to, but I think they couldn't. They couldn't afford it. Do you, think I would have, have. do you think I would all would have been president in Nigeria? He should have. If he had been, we would have been very lucky. Let's take a break and uh, unlock the keyhole to the inner rooms. Are you ready? Well, if you want to, yeah. There you go. Right, 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 right. You're looking right. there. I'm not looking in there. Uh, okay. All right, you've got the question. All right. 
How do you cope with the ever-changing nature of technology? Oh, wow. Using computer and other communication gadgets. Do you own one? Oh, let me, where, where is it? where's my bag? Can oh. I have my iPad? Oh, you have an iPad. And uh, I, I am fascinated by the te technology. Is this your iPad? Yes, that's my iPad. Well, I, I'll say that because I'm a librarian, so how, 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 you know, the question which says, how do you cope with the ever-changing? Oh, I'm, ex I'm excited. Every day I wish I were a student. Really? Technology and computer and all this other communication had given man uh, access to knowledge. Yes. Fantastic access to knowledge. Now, now we are going to the moon. We are thinking of... We have a, uh, train, a station in the, on, on, in the moon. In fact, most of the things in, in this, my iPad, is, is uh, put, put in what they call the cloud, iCloud, in a cloud. I'm still using it anyway. Well, that's fine. I'm, that's I'm good enough to, that's, good, that's great. Fantastic. That's good to know. I think that uh, I have no problem with modern technology. How did you meet your husband? Just by chance, really, somebody, well, I just arrived back from Cambridge, and he said, ah, you must come to a meeting of uh, trade union something, something. It was to do, I can't even remember the title. And he said, I'd like you to meet uh, a young man who I consider the, the most uh, popular and brilliant bachelor in town, and I smiled. But he said he was serious, why, why so did, I went. Why, why did you smile? Is that what you well, were looking for at the time? No, I wasn't. I, Are I was you looking, sure? I was looking for where I would work at the time. Oh, were you not thinking of marriage at that time? Well, I, I should be. I should be. I, 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 I was, but I, I didn't think that I would and have. Then when, and then when you met him, what happened? We, I, I, I was surprised. We became friends. Really? You, yes. you were attracted to him immediately? Well, yes, yes. My teacher was the one who introduced me, me to, and then he, but he introduced me also as the latest spinster. Whoa! <laughs> and, there, and there you were, really coming from England, looking yes. really, you know. Well, I did thank God. Ah, and that you know was the beginning and became, of a life. And became very great friends. Yes, it was. He was my friend. He was my husband as well as a husband. And not many, not many women are that lucky to have their a friend, their husband also as a friend. Is it important? It's very important for marriage. I think so. For me, it was very important. How did you, how long did you la last in this marriage? When did you judge? We got married in 50, 53. Wow. And he died in 67. I'm sure you still you still miss him a great deal. I do. So, so did fact, you, did you ever thing. quarrel? Yeah. I did tried to arrange his uh, books, and he well, he came and I thought he would be pleased that I had arranged this and the place where he came in and he said, "Don't you ever touch my books? There is order in the disorder which you see around because there were books all over the place, you know, on the bed in the in the little flat that we were at that time." Okay, so but, you had uh, misunderstandings as well. All marriages have misunderstandings, for goodness sake. What, 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 would, I, what would you say would have been the brightest moment in your marriage? You must have had so many bright moments. Yeah, there. we have so many bright moments. Put we your didn't, finger we didn't, on one. We didn't. That's all right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe when we were still courting and uh, we were racing after he was racing after me at Barbage. There was a real Barbage then. The Barbage had now been taken away by the sea. Oh dear. In Lagos. He was racing after running after you. Yeah, we were just playing and games you were running. like two children. It was <laughs> funny. I think those are, that's one memory that I'm sure if you had memory. your way you'd like to bring back those memories. Oh I will yes I do. Yeah? Every every day I think about him, yes. Is that what you see missing in, you know, today's marriages that don't seem to last, you know, what do you think is responsible? 
many of the marriages that I see now, although they accept women as okay, equal, but they don't really, in marriage, they don't really uh, give them the opportunity to function as equals. I personally believe that at home, my husband is head of the family, and I accepted that. Regardless of your financial Regardless of status. money, regardless of finance, regardless of... Why do you uh, think so? I'd always grown up uh, in, a, in, a, in a cultural background which gave men superiority. But outside, I consider us all as children of God entitled to, to equal equal uh, opportunities. As I said, we were friends. If you are friends, you, you will respect one another. I think the women also are at fault, true. Now, they, they, they think, they, they forget that in, in any teamwork, somebody has to be head, and you have to accept that your husband is head of the family. Mm -hmm and work together as it is. But he must consult you. Mm -hmm. As long as, if you are friends and he respects you, he will consult you. Mm -hmm. My husband used to write papers and give it, try me and give it to me to read. And I, I, I used to critique it. But I don't go about saying, no, I wrote his paper, or I critique his paper and all that. But you are retired now. Yes. So you don't have to get up every day to go to the university to teach? No. But I'm still very busy. What's your typical day like? When do you wake up in the morning? And when do you go to bed at night? I wake up about between 7 and 7. Usually between 6.30 and 7. Then what do you do? I'm looking outside a center. I'm looking outside this library to begin with. I'm looking outside a center for women. When you go out, do you drive yourself? I drove myself till I oh, was 70. No. Till I was 70. Oh, okay. And then the, the um, uh, at 70, they, ref in they refused, they refused, to, give refused to give me a license Would anymore. Would you have taken a license at 70? At 70, I was still <laughs> alert and... Uh, so wh wh what are the kind of things you cannot do now? Well, I cannot drive now. Okay. Can my you, my, you, le my leg gets swollen, so okay. I have a walking stick now. I cannot dance, now. I used to love dancing. Really? Yes. Were you good at it? I think so, not bad. So Can we have then, a dance? No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't, I fall. Now I did, that's why I have my walking stick. Really? Because as you go, I, actually I was still all right until I became 92. It's, and until I became 91, then I found that I'd lost my balance. You lose balance. Yeah. And you need a walking stick wow. once you are 90. Professor Gute, it's been wonderful talking to you. I've Thank enjoyed you. every moment of it. Thank you very much. I hope yes. you've enjoyed yourself. I have, I have. As you now get giving, closer. you giving me memories, it brought back pleasant memories. Really? Yes. Excellent. We'll do that again. I've had a because good I, life. I'm not sure you're done with life. <laughs> well, I don't know. If, if, if. I just pray that I will end well. You will end That I will. And that. Uh, I know where I'm going and that I will make it. You have my best have wishes. Salvation. You have yes. my best wishes. Thank you. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you. I've it's enjoyed a your company. Thank you. And that's how it's been with the woman who has been first all her life. Professor Adeto Ogunshaye, the first female professor in Nigeria. I am Nani. Thanks for being there. <laughs>